Hey, this is SoCo Random here with the video on how to install a sub and amp on a 2017 Nissan Armada. Should be good for 18, 19, and possibly 20. All right, Armada lovers. Well, I'm a, today I'm going to be showing you how to install an amp and a sub without having to take out your head unit. First, I'm going to show you what tools you're going to need for this job. I got a drill just to make things easy. Uh, here's a couple things depending on what your preference is. We got some clamps, we got electrical tape, and heat shrink wrap. We also got wire cutters, wire strippers. This is the amp kit I got from Walmart. Uh, depending on what you are going to use, referring to amp and sub, depending on what wattage you need. I got this just to be safe. You can get yours probably Amazon, online, or even from where I actually got my sub and my amp from Scar Audio. They also have that on Amazon. I got a couple of wrenches here. I got a 10 inch, 14. Two different size wrenches. I got the attachment that goes to the drill. I got a 10 millimeter there we go. 10 millimeter to help out with some of the nuts. I got a 14, a 12, and a 10. I got a flathead screwdriver, a pry tool. Or you can, depending on what you want, you can use a screwdriver with a cloth over it to get some of the parts off. Uh, some needle nose. This is a speaker wire I had got from Walmart. This is what I used. I also got this from Walmart, $10, and it comes with the line to help solder your lines together. And these are the line out converters. I got two different ones. The one on the left is what I originally got. And with all the troubleshooting, I thought that may have been the problem. So I got this one. This is either at Walmart or online, Amazon. First things first, we need to disconnect the battery. First you start with the negative, then you go to the positive. When hooking back up the battery, you need to go from the negative to the positive. You need to disconnect the battery Anytime you work on anything electrical on the vehicle, it's just so it doesn't mess up any of your electronics. So right here I have my line going to the back towards the firewall. There's a black boot. If you look closely, you can be able to pull that off and start feeding your line through there. All right, second, you're in the passenger side of the vehicle. You come down here, you got this piece right here. You're just gonna pull it from the front. They pop off and you pull it straight out. Let's put it on your seat. Next, you got that little screw right there. You're gonna pull that out. You're gonna unscrew it and pull it out. And that's going to take off this section right in here. Or first, wait. That's after this next step. But you will have to take off that screw. So after this piece, you'll be taking off the floor runner plate, whatever you want to call it. So all you got to do is pull. Pull very lightly, but very stiff at the same time. You're going to pull up, everything just pops out. Back here, it's clipped in to this other plastic piece that also pops out. Everything pops into place. 
All right. Next, as you can see, my line is running through there. So the next one, I'll have to get my screwdriver real quick. Flathead. I'll be right back. All right, I got my light just to make it a little bit easier. You got that little screw up there. You're going to take that out. You should only need a couple twists and you could do the rest by hand. I just left that down here so I didn't lose it. Next, I'm going to pull it out. Like every, all these other ones, you got to pull very soft but hard at the same time. Now it's going to be weird. This is my first video I've ever made. So, as you see, these ones actually come out this way, but they call it little Christmas trees or whatever, so when you put it back in, you're actually going to go from this end. It's going to be a little difficult to try to get it in there, but you'll be able to get it in. Get it right there, and then push. Make sure it's on those tabs and push to get it back on. Alright, so it's hard to see. But as you're feeding that line through, let's see if I can get the camera to show. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see, but as you push it through that little boot I showed you in the front, you'll see it pop down through here. You want to get it. You're going to have to go back and forth unless you have two people. But let's see. You're going to pull it through. Go back, push it a little bit more through because it might get caught on some of the components in the engine engine bay. But as you bring it down, you're gonna bring all of it in here until what you need you have what you need out there. So ooh, it looks like I need a vacuum. So these come out pretty easy. You just pull away from it and pull up. Alright, so what I did was just tuck it right next to all of Right to the side of that, or the clip that your floorboard actually clips into. All right. Next thing, you're gonna bring your seat all the way forward. Watch out so you don't crush any of your stuff up here, and that should be good right there. So after I got this part off, I just figured it'd be easier to pop these out, so you don't have to go in at an angle. Just pop them out, get a screwdriver, put it under it, pop it out a little bit, and then go under it again, and then it should come fully out like that. And it'll make it easier to install. Just get it aligned where it needs to go. Make sure that it is aligned on there. And then you want to look in here and watch your holes. You see the hole down there, or up there, and the hole down, get it focused. Right down there. Alright, you're going to line it up and then push it in. Alright, the next step, you're going to get to your flat head and you're going to pull the seat belt cover off. Uh, uh, I guess I need one. There you go. That is a 12 millimeter. You're going to need a wrench because you can't get a socket in there. So a wrench should be able to get it loose maybe able to do it by fingers depending on how you do it and then you will be removing this black pillar like everything else pull the sloth but pretty firm at the same time after you get that done you can feed your line through here at the bottom of that after you get that off same thing with your second row you're gonna take this off. All right. Ugh, I didn't go on, but yes. I'm actually gonna, since I already got my positive line to the back, I will be showing you how to take this part off. This whole back part off. But I'll be showing you from the driver side because I do still need to run the base volume control. So with the amp, it is right behind here. 
This side's a little bit different than that side because it got, what does it have? It got the extra ones in the back. But I will send you pictures on how to take these off without messing them up. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can do it from the top and pry it up and then unplug it. Or when you're opening this whole part, you can unplug it from the bottom, whatever you prefer. So for the back, this side, you will take this off, take the seal out. out. I hang it up up here so you don't have to worry about it being in your way onto the lever. Um, you have to take this out and I will show more detail on the other side. I'm going to take off the other side to run my base volume line. Taking off this seat belt right here. Lift this up. Take it off. Or I could actually show you an easier way, but you'll be taking that off. Go ahead and go to the back. Okay, next I'll be getting into the bottom. So, this is my sub. I've got yet to get the wires all situated, but I will show you what you need to do. So, you'll be able to remove this. Mine is not removable. You can move this to the side to get your jack, but that's all you really need. Okay. I didn't put these bolts on yesterday, but I do got them in here. You'll be taking off a 12. A 10 and a 10. After you take those two off, it pops right up. Got a couple clips in there. Go ahead and put it off to the side. Alright. I took this backboard off just to make it a little easier. After you do that, after all that's off, you can go back here. This is what I was talking about taking off that back seat belt this after you unscrew this this pops up no problem take that out and all this just pops up this is this is on top of this side but it all just pops up after you take off this one and this one so I ran my positive going from the back around through here yeah we're going through here i also got the lines that you need to get to the amp i will post picture of those so i do not have to take hold this whole side off i will be taking off that side to run my line for the amp volume but this is what you will have to do for your power and your amp wires So what you can do, I'm doing this a little out of whack so you might see some things going on that are from previous videos. It's because I'm taking stuff apart while I'm doing it. So you're going to be taking off this bottom piece right here all the way across. So you're going to pull on this after you take that piece off, you're going to pull on this and it's going to pop straight all the way across. So now you'll be able to take this part off fully so you're able to get to the amp and actually you may not even be have to take it all the way out. I took it all the way out to have room. You may only have to take it so it's leaning and then you'll be able to work on the amp. Make sure to take off all these pieces. But you might be able to lean it over, get hooked up to the amp which I'm going to show you how to do with some pictures that I got. They're a little bit clearer. I'm going to run them over the wheel well and down through here. I actually put it through a little hole right here so it's not going over stuff and it can't get pinched. 
All right. And then next I'll show you how to take this piece off. All right, so for these two pieces right here, I got a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna pop it out, it'll come out pretty easy. This piece pops up and it just squeezes through from there. All right, this piece down here, just pop it off from the side. And it's gonna lift up. And then you have a 10 millimeter in there. You're gonna need the 10 millimeter wrench because the socket might not get in there. I to do stuff with one hand, but after a couple turns, you might be able to get it off with your fingers the rest of the way. A little while, and then next I will show you how to take off that. Let's go ahead and set that there. So after you got that bottom piece off, it's gonna pull it up. Goes just like that. So this is where I have my positive too. The middle of the cigarette outlet or the 12 volt socket. And those other wires are my failed attempt because with a line out converter, with all other systems, you just have to wire it to some speakers and you're done. But with since we have the Bose system, that doesn't work. So I originally had them wired from this speaker and this speaker. I had this whole piece off. And I had the lines coming through here, down here, into the line out converter. That was a failed attempt a couple times. But yeah, that's how you take this off, this side anyways. Next, we'll be taking off this part, the C-belts, kind of like the other side, what we're going to be doing over there, or what you will be doing. I'm just going to mirror it over here. We're going to take off C-belts, tie down, other C-belt, and all this stuff, and I'll show you how to get it to go through to the front and that's going to be for my base level so with the cigarette outlet you can hold this side and turn it uh, they might be different but there's little notches let me get my light oh, there it is. so on the back side you might be able to see that little plastic notch that's back here. All right. So you see those right there? It's going to go in there and it's going to pull out. After you get it pulled out, first you got to unhook it. Let me turn it back so you can see this little push button right here. I'm gonna push that and pull it out. Come out just like that. So now after you got that piece, you're gonna go ahead and, after you got that piece off, you're gonna go ahead and twist this all the way around to the other notch and it's gonna come straight out. While taking out the screw, taking out the screw, you're gonna wanna hold that middle piece because if you don't, this whole piece will come off. The white piece will come off, the black piece will come out, and this middle piece will come off. So I have mine soldered to make it more secure. Make sure it's not touching the negative. Kind of crappy, but it's held on really, really good. So with this piece, there's a couple different ways. I soldered mine in it so it's more secure. 
If you do solder it, just make sure it's not touching the negative. Middle is positive and is negative. With that screw, you could either get you um, a connector and wrap it around there, which I didn't have one. So I just got a soldering gun and soldered it together. You will want to hold that middle. Alright, so since you got that middle piece off, the opposite of this side, up over here. You take off that one, that, and unplug the power source over there from the back, which I showed you. Seat belt, tie down, other seat belt right here. Okay, I'm going to start pulling. So at this part, pretty much just got to pull it out. You might think you're going to break it, but everything is just popping out, popping out. So this side, that's all you're really going to need to get your wire to the back for your amp control. For some of you that didn't know, there's your sub box of the sub that doesn't really bump. So there's that. So yeah, and then I'll show a little video of it after it's wired through this part. Alright, so on this part we're going to be hooking up your volume control. There's a couple different places. I'm just going to use a 3M because my wife doesn't want anything screwed in. So you could either go right there or there, but you risk hitting it with your knee when you get in and out. There's also right here, which this is where I'm going to put it. Depending on how you want to wire it, you could even wire it next to your seat. And if you want to go in real in depth, you can put it inside of here, which I'm not going to. I'm going to make it easy for me and put it right there, somewhere right there. I'll figure it out. But it comes with two screws and it comes with double sided tape that you can use 3m there's two screws and there's a double sided tape I'm actually just gonna put it right here uh, whatever feels best and after that I will show you where to wire everything I'm going all the way back through your side back through here through here and we are going to be taking this off. Let's take it from the bottom, pull out, make sure you got everything unhooked. So I decided to mount mine right here. Down here, it was a little hard to get your fingers in. Right here, it was a little bit better because you can get to it down there, it was a little hard. So I'm going to run mine, get your tool. I'm gonna run it down through here. Uh, this one I would suggest you use some plastic so you don't cut into it if you try to use a screwdriver. But you really gotta push it in there. So I'm gonna run it through here. Back behind here, let me turn on the light. There you go, way better. So back behind here, it's gonna go behind this little part right here after it's tucked in you're gonna run it this way by your OB and then back this way I'm gonna show you how it looks completed so on this part after I ran it back over there I ran it get back a little bit. I ran it just across back here up over this line as you can see if you want you can tape it and at this part I zip tied it so it stayed on top then I went back behind and get a further one so after I came down there it is I went back behind this harness just to keep it close to the back like I said it's how you prefer to do it so now I'm going to make it go through here. So after you got your wire 
through there. Got it all nice and secure. Go ahead and stick it underneath the carpet. Doesn't have to be all the way. You're gonna see some right here. And after you get it wired through to the back where I showed you, you're gonna go ahead and start trying to put this in. This part goes in this little hole right here. So you're gonna have to force it down a little bit, bend it, and then you're gonna push all the way and kind of give it a couple give it a couple taps. As you can tell it is it's not aligned right. But just get this side for now. Sorry, my neighbor is uh, doing some yard work. It's a pretty nice day here in Colorado. But yeah, uh, you're gonna go ahead and get this side pushed in and you could hear the clips. And then I'll show you what to do back here before you actually put this back together. And while you're back here, after you got all that pushed in, your wire is good. That part taped, I don't know if you can see it. Let me go ahead and right back there I got it taped so it's not pinched on any of this got my positive either soldered or as a little connector you can go ahead and connect this back together since you have your battery unplugged there's no nothing hot in here that I know of that I got shocked by but yeah and after you get that you're all done with this part go ahead and clip it back in Everything up. clip back in. I gotta get up there and do that. We got this part. One thing I did do is I broke this little Christmas tree clip right here. You can call it. It's supposed to look like that. And now it looks like that. This one, I'm not gonna bother too much because it's being held down by the cross plastic piece. But I'm pretty sure you can get those on Amazon if you do happen to break some important ones that make it stick out a lot get those on Amazon get everything on Amazon pretty much this whole setup you can get on Amazon get it pushed back in there I'm gonna have to do that little piece up there when I'm done and after you're done with that you can go ahead and put your pieces back your seat belts your little tie downs that you got back here you already got that in, connected, you're good. Right, so in this area, where I showed you before, that little spot, you're gonna have your wires coming through here. Black one's gonna be your base volume. You're gonna have both RCAs coming through here. I'll show you what I did with the rest of it because I only got a little bit. And then you got your positive line. Got it all going from here, I'll show you. So down there at the bottom, that's where I stuffed the rest of the RCA cables because it is 16 feet, I believe. And you only need about three and a half. So I wrapped it up, zip tied it, and stuck it in there. And that's where I'll be pushing my positive down up in that area. Whenever I get it to the length I want, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it to the bottom just so it doesn't pull in. Your ground wire, I know this is turning, uh, I don't know how it's going to look on YouTube. Like I said, it's my first video I've done uh, anything. So there's your, your ground, this is to your amp, or actually not to your amp, to your line out converter. That is to your amp. As you can tell, it's very small, very short. So that's why I did it right here in this area. It's covered by your cover. All this will be covered. The only thing you're gonna see is the amp and a couple wires sticking through. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this all ready to go. And I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna mount the line out converter too. So yeah. So as you get it wired back, you can see it through the hole moving around. You're gonna want to Make sure it's above this stuff and bring it through actually where I'm going to have my positive feed. The little, little gap down here on the bottom, go ahead and go through there, pull it through, make sure you don't have it in the way of that bolt. 
And that's about it. Just make sure it doesn't have any pinch points. And actually, if you want, you can get a piece of black tape and get a piece of black tape and tape it right here just so it doesn't fall while you're putting everything back, which I'm going to do. If you can hear me, uh, you got to push these down as you push it in. There are a couple of them. So then when you get this one right here, all this just pops into place. Popping, popping, and then this last one right here, pop into place. All this will be able to pop into place fully once you get that back part in. This is all secure right here. So since you got your wire in, not showing anywhere, after you get that done, you can go ahead and put this last piece in and you'll be done with this side. Alright, so after I got it through there, so with this, to get these off, all you ought to really do is push it forward and pull it up and all the rest should come off pretty easy to get it back on, just go through, but I do have it on the back side, not on the top because that's where the clip's in. back same thing with these clips I got it coming to the back and then after you're done with that you just got to put everything back the way it was through here it's pretty easy everything clips on don't worry to worry about anything and after you do that you can hook back up your seat belt somewhere right here and that's the only thing you gotta hook up until you get to the back back part, which I'm showing you right in a couple of seconds. Okay, so I'm halfway down. What I expect, suggest doing with this middle, middle pil pillar is coming from the top after you move this seat belt all the way, coming from the top, slide it down because it's hard to get it in there with the seat. So you can't really get it in there. So you come from the top and slide it all the way down, get it in place, pop it in. With these ones, you gotta kinda pull down, pull down on the top so they could get a line. And you should be able to just push them in. Oh, I gotta do that, two hands. But yeah, get the middle one first and then do the running board that goes up the side. Make sure you do the one that's behind that one first and then this running board after this. And then you can get to the second one. So after you get that in, just get your fingers. You'll notice it's tucked in. Start from the bottom, just pull it out. And it'll roll right back out. All right, and there's that. Let's go ahead and put on the next one. This is just gonna line up. Pretty much exactly how I took it off. As this one only has a clip right there on the bottom and a clip up top. You want to do the top clip first, and this one goes over the white molding. Push it in, get everything aligned. Just push down. Everything clicks back in place. And then you get your little screw, I'm gonna turn back on the light. Get your little screw, twist it back on. You might not even need to use a screwdriver to fully get it on, but yeah, you don't need a screwdriver. All right, you get that on, get this piece back on. Get in there, you'll see, over there on the corner, you'll see that one, this one, and this one over here to the right. So all you're gonna do is line up, line up on that one, the middle, and the end. Get in there, push up. Everything clicking, and that part is done. So if you could hear me, this is a clip I'm talking about. You can pull it out from this white one, or you can pull it out from up here. 
See how I pull it and it comes out, but you got there's two on each side, one, or one on each side, one on that side, one on the back side. Do not try to go from that little brown tab from each side because it'll pull the whole mechanism out from the switch. I did that to the other side and I had to figure out how to put it back together. Luckily I did. So from down here, uh, I can't remember where the switch is. I think it's on the back side. But yeah, from here, this switch or that, that clip and the clip in the back, take it out. You don't really need it on this side, but this is just a reference for the amp side. So I have the wire just ran there under the harness for there and just all the way back and I'll show you where to put it through. Alright so the still picture is going to be of the interior behind the panel uh, showing the amp. On this picture it's showing a red circle. Um, that I believe is the airbag uh, sensor so you're gonna have to take that off in order to get to the amp this picture is a close-up of the amp and uh, where the bolts are gonna be to take it out this one is a picture of the front side of the amp this picture right here is the harnesses coming from the amp you will be using the harness on the left in this picture it shows you which two wires you're going to be tapping into it's going to be the red one and the white one remember these are where your speaker wire is going to go to uh, you can tap into it a little bit down the line um, and open it up and the red is going to be positive the white is going to be negative um, you can do it however you want to a uh, wine or a line uh, tapper what I did was split the line and uh, wrap it in there and solder it together and tape it back together. All right, so this is pretty much final. I just threw tape on there just to keep it pressed against till I get the amp in. You got your positive, negative, RCAs, and your remote wire. They're the only things that are gonna be going through that hole that I showed you previously. I got it taped and uh, yeah, just got the tape there to keep it back. You don't have to do all that. Um, one thing I did, I didn't make the speaker wires coming from the amp, the factory amp anyways. I didn't make them long enough. So that's why this is down here and that up there with those. You can see it's pulling a little bit. But yeah, just make sure you got that halfway or less depending on what you want. And like I said, if you 3M tape it, you won't be able to get it out without messing it up. So right here, I could actually pull it out if I want to, but I'm just going to leave it in there, kind of tucked away. It's not in the way of that piece coming down. So I'll go ahead and get this cover in, get the wires through, get the amp hooked up, and the speakers. So when you're putting on this flap that connects to the back seat, there's Velcro on the back here. Um, just, I just kind of stick it on there. It's just so the little kids don't stick their hands in there. See all the mechanicals. It's kind of hide it. That's it. So yeah, and then flap down. So after you got your amp done and your wire done, or your uh, positive and your wire from the amp. It's gonna go ahead and lay it in here. Remember, you've got your battery disconnected. You have your negative running right there. What I actually did on mine was I cut up a little hole. Cut it from the back. Cut down this way, cut down this way, and cut straight across. It makes a little flat. That's where your line's gonna come through. So like I said, underneath here, you can do it however you want it. But just make sure you got enough line to do what you want to do. This is pretty much what it's gonna look like, except for I gotta put the amp in there. 
Um, you just got to make sure you have enough. The RCAs are going to go by themselves on the back side. On the back side, these three are going to go on the other side. And when I told you I have, I got bigger gauge wire because of the amp kit. This is what I had to do in order to get it into my amp. If you have a bigger amp, you might not have to do this. But this is what I had to do for the negative and positive because it was too big. So after you got your lines ran, you're going to want to solder. You could use these crimping ones and then wrap them with some electrical tape. But I'm going to go back through and solder all of them. I had them. First I had them taped just to get everything tested. And then I had them crimped because I had to pack everything up and get it. I had to use the vehicle to pack everything up. But now I'm going to go through. And I'm going to be soldering all of these, soldering them, and then I'm going to be taping them. So this is the line-out converter. There's many different ones out there. So the RCAs come from your converter into your app. Okay. We got this, which I'm going to be wiring up to the front driver's side to adjust it. Low, high, if you have your kids, you can have a low, if you're by yourself, max. In here also is, if you only think you can see it, but these are the adjust levels. I have them both at halfway. This is my negative. I actually have this going to the same ground as my amp. They do tell you you can ground it from here to your negative over here. The same thing, but I just have it down there because I want the least amount of wires up here. So I actually have it tapped into right there. And your amp wiring kit will come with everything you need for screwing it down even the little attachment to go with the screw okay so after you get your positive in put it in there but put it in there after your well i guess you're going to have your battery unplugged so it doesn't matter how you hook it up next is my power the power can also be ran with this power I've seen videos say you need a 10 10 amp fuse if you do add it to here but what I did is I attached it to here to the back of it I'll actually show you that when I take part this side okay so after you get your lines ran from your amp you're gonna come back here and you're going to hook both of them up. Solid's positive, line is negative. You're going to hook them both up to both of these. I know some videos, some people say you have to have it separate lines, but after all the testing I did and all the stuff I had to go through, it was easier to do it like this, and I still get max base. After I got everything, I just screw these straight into the little fabric. You can do it however you want. I know some people like to screw it onto the box of the sub. Some like to have it, I've seen some people have it like screwed on the side, but I'd rather have mine under here. So if somebody happens to break into my vehicle, they don't know where it's at. And they'll take the sub rather than the amp because most of the time they just open it and rip it out. So if your amp's connected to your sub, they got your whole system except for wires. Alright. So I'm going to solder these real quick. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Alright, this is what your lines are going to look like.
you're going to do that to every line you have to put together. I don't want to focus on that. But if you don't want to solder, you can also just use a crimping tool. Crimping and some black tape. So what I'm going to do is after these cool off, I'm going to fold them over and I'm going to tape them. But you're going to do that with every line. The remote line, this is what actually tells your amp to turn on. It's going to go around however you want to do it. Whatever is comfortable for you, it's going to go in the middle. Speaker lines, like I said, go to these two, which I'm going to do here in a minute. I just wanted to show you soldering some find it easier just to crimp it and tape it but more secure this way all right a couple things I forgot to mention your amp wiring kit may come with this it may not this is for your positive and your I guess you can say your positive from your line out converter but it makes it a bunch easier or a lot easier if you just connect it to the battery like I showed you. Another thing is your amp comes with an Allen wrench. This is going to be to disconnect or connect all of these. And it comes with your amp. And depending on what kind of amp you get, an amp wiring kit you get, depends on what gauge wire you get. This amp is an SKM500 1D or 5000 1D. And what I had to do is because this wire gauge is meant for a 1600 watt amp, this is only 500. It still works. So what I had to do is I had to fold some of the wire back and tape it so it doesn't come into contact with anything else just to make this a little bit thinner. I just put it in there, wrap it up, put it in there. Make sure you screw this down tight. I also had to do the same thing with the negative wire. So I got all my lines soldered together everywhere. Remember the speaker wire. Solid is positive. Line, black line or white line is negative. I know in the beginning of this uh, video I told you uh, heat shrink. Uh, I prefer tape. Um, I don't know why I just prefer tape. It's more, you do more with it like this. Bundle it up. Make sure you have no metal or wire showing. Here's this part. This is my, uh, my uh, power REM that goes to the amp. This also goes to the amp, RCAs. And there are my settings inside. You might be able to see it. I just have them straight up and down, so right in the middle. So what you're going to want to do, if you do get a brand new amp and a brand new sub, you're going to want to break it in. For some of you, you do know how to break in a, a sub that is don't have it at full power. If you have it at full power, it it will bump, but some say it doesn't matter. But if you do break it in, do it a little bit, then it'll last longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you where I'm gonna put this at. I'm actually gonna put it in right here. After I plug in the RCAs, it's gonna be in this spot right under this, this one. You can zip tie it. Mm -hmm. Or 3M tape it, but you never know if you're going to have to take it out to do the fine tweaks of the line-out converter. So I'm just going to have mine right here. I'm going to all the extra wire that you do have. You can actually shove it back in that little crevice where your original RCAs are. And then uh, the next part is getting it all hooked up. Alright, with this piece right here, I do recommend... You just pull this part out, pull it out, it'll be this by itself. Get it in there, 
we'll get a little around a little bit. I guess I gotta make sure it's clipped in. It'll be off centered. I think it's off centered for a reason. And then you go ahead and put it in there. Get this other piece. Just push it in. It's done. And then now you can put these back in down here. So just put it on and then start twisting. Once you get it threaded, push it all the way back because it's like two different pieces, two separate pieces. The metal and then the plastic and just hand tighten it. Get your 10 millimeter. And tighten it down. So before I put that in, I did forget to mention, you have to put this back in. And if you're doing the whole system, you have both of these out. You'll have both sides for the amp. Amp on this side, and then your wire going for your base volume. So when you do it, you're basically going to have both these side panels off. I only did this side because this is the only side I needed. Uh, it's a long kind of little long process taking these off taking all the little parts off on both sides so that's why i didn't show you this side for the amp but the most important part is the amp the, the factory amp that is i got pictures that show better than a video could um i'll go ahead and post pictures of that putting on this part that goes there just make sure none of the wires are in the way. Just make sure they're all up there. Pop it in. Get your bolts back in. Get those back in. You can go ahead and put this one in across. Don't worry about this being out. All you gotta do is put your finger under it and Roll it out, roll it all the way out, all the way across. That's if it didn't, it didn't get stuck under there. Got stuck, don't worry about it, just roll it out. It's pretty easy. So this battery originally came with this on it. Um, I guess I could have cut a hole right here in the back to get it on there. But I didn't want to have to do all that, so I just connected it straight to right here. Straight to right here, just unloosen it and tighten it back down. It does clear the hood, so you'll be fine. And uh, hook this back up and listen to your base. So this is the final product of the amp. The MRC is going by, going back. Negative, remote, positive, speakers. Just got them all in there if you want for extra neatness. There you go. I do have mine screwed down just to this flimsy thing. But I have it like that so this doesn't move around in here and pull out wires. Turning them. Make a left or right turn. So there's that. I got the speaker wire running back kind of with the positive and the, the other speaker wire that goes to line out converter right behind here. Close this. Have it coming out the corner into your sub. I have mine on the right side because the single folding seat so you have more room on the left for the double folding. Next is, uh, I don't know if you can hear it on here, but I'll show you the sound before and after. I'll turn down the bass with my knob up there, and then I'll turn it up and let you know. And there it is. And with this particular sub, if you need to get into the bottom up here, I have enough wire so I could just lean it back. Move this out of the way and open that if I need to get to the jack or the amp to adjust your gain. Uh, my buddy, 
He actually builds sub boxes, but he's way out of town. Uh, I'll have to link his Facebook page so you guys could look at his videos. But he is mad into bass. So he suggested me gain no more than halfway, subsonic all the way down, and LPF about halfway. Uh, I guess you can fine tune it to your liking, but for now, if especially if it's new, do not go full. Like I mentioned before, you don't want to break in your sub. This remote line right there, uh, that's another form of bass control. I actually got um, with a line out converter, the other line out converter, the orange box in the beginning, it connects right there. The one I got connects to the other line out converter that is connected under there. Which is less wires here. Let's close it up. Flip it back. Put it in right there. I'll leave it out a little bit so you can get to these buttons right here. There's actually a fan behind here uh, that sucks in right there to cool off the factory amp. Um, and it comes out in those vents right there. So it kind of just flows through either that way or this way to cool off that amp. This amp isn't too big, so it doesn't really get hot. Um, yeah, next is a startup. And after you hook everything up, looks like that. I like this one because it kind of goes, has an angle. It goes with the seat. And uh, before you turn it on, you turn it on and you don't have bass, don't forget to hook back up that positive wire. That's how you hook up a... Uh, amp and a sub to a factory Bose system it's a lot easier with a different vehicle but since we have the Bose it's a little hard it's a little dirty haven't washed it but there she is it's my wife's icebox and if uh, you like this video give it a thumbs up leave a comment I'll show you how to install the ape man front and rear camera yep if you like it leave me a comment about what you like and uh, that might be my next video and I'll go through that and show you how to install that camera with no wires showing at all Well, there you go. Thank you for watching. I make this uh, YouTube channel, so go ahead and subscribe and I'll make more videos about the Armada since there's none online for pretty much anything besides a couple things, but electrical is kind of hard. Thank you for watching. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button.